Coming up next on The Voice of Alabama Politics, is the AG parking money out of state? Also, the V Team takes a look at big defense spending in North Alabama. And Congressman Mo Brooks, he got his feelings hurt. Apologize. Otto. What? Apologize. How about a raspberry? <laughs> All this and much, much more coming up next on The V. Welcome to the voice of Alabama politics, where we tackle the tough issues so you have the hard facts. I'm your host, Bill Britt, and today I'm joined by Susan Britt, research guru extraordinaire, and Josh Moon, investigative reporter and opinion columnist with APR. Welcome all. Hi, hey, guys. How are y'all doing? Fantastic. You know, I must go, what'd you say, Josh? I said I'm doing fantastic. All right. I made the mistake of picking up one of Susan's coffee cups this morning. It Thank says, <laughs> yet despite the look on my face, you're still talking. This is where I live. <laughs> Thank you, Vinny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Come on, Bill. You got to learn to read the room, my man. Read the room. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of learning to read the room, uh, Congressman Mo Brooks got his little bitty feelings hurt no, because no. he thinks that we said something nasty about him and that Andrew Mitchell said something nasty about him, and Jennifer Rubens at the Post said something nasty about him, and, and some Democrats said something nasty about him. So he wants an apology from the Socialist Democrats, their fake news media allies, and rhino surrender caucuses. So since we don't fit into any of those categories, I don't think... No. No, yeah. no apology. Hey, apparently he's good with us. All right, moving on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what, he, what he had an issue with, Susan, was that you know, uh, people equated his actions on January 6th as being part of the catalyst that riled these folks up to commit insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. You mean the fact that he was on the same stage as Donald Trump when the riot was basically incited from those speeches? Yeah. I can't imagine why anybody would mistake that for him being involved. Well, he says, Josh, the evidence is overwhelming that he had nothing to do with what happened at the Capitol. Well, you know, he, part of his excuse here is that, uh, you know, there is a, uh, it was all planned. You know, there, there, it was all pre-planned. So how could his speeches have, have done anything right. to it? Which right. is like saying, well, we planned the football game, so there's no reason for the coach to give the pep talk. You know, I mean, it's uh, that that was part of the whole deal was them getting on stage and and riling everybody up and then sending them off to the Capitol. You know, that's right. that's what everybody there was there for was to rile these people up, make them as angry as hell, and then send them off to the Capitol. How many times does the FBI have to say Antifa was not involved? Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it I, you know, I think you know, it, it seems to me. I mean, this was a long list of folks. He said that I compared him to the Taliban, and well, I don't know that I would do that. But what I said was, uh, in a Brooks America, majority of white men would dominate every sphere of public life and impose religious order with Taliban-style justice. And I do believe that he is, he would be just as comfortable in a radical sect, a, a, a mis, you know, a Middle Eastern radical sect, or uh, with a Russian oligarchy, a strong man. I think that's his idea of government. We don't see him actually do anything for the people of Alabama. We just see him yell and scream and try to own libs and, and he's passed one bill yeah. his entire time, Josh. Yeah, one bill. How many years has he been there now? Ten. Jeez. Uh, yeah. ten, ten or so, right? And uh, it, it is a, it's ridiculous um, the amount of attention he has managed to garner for himself with as little work as he's actually done for anybody. Right. Uh, as right. a matter of fact, he's, he's more than hurt his own district and his own people. Uh, yeah. That's all he's done. Is is hurt yeah. them there and done nothing for anybody except renaming the post office after a guy. You know, I mean, and, well, it's so, up. 
go ahead. I'm sorry. No, it's it's fine. I'm I just that that's to your point is exactly right. This is who he is. That's who he's going to be, and that's all we can say about it. Is uh, you know we, that he is uh, he he's this guy. Well, we I mean, look. This is a Republican state. Republicans uh, have every uh, statewide office, constitutional office, every congressional district, with the exception of Terry Sewell, mm -hmm. and that you dare criticize him seems to just be too much for him. Let me inform you, Mr. Brooks, your supporters have threatened physical violence against me and my wife. Mm -hmm. Your supporters have said lies and said things that are so over the top, but you don't see us screaming and yelling like you do. You sound like a third grader who just got a wedgie from a bigger guy. <laughs> Take it, man. That's the way life is. You You're going to get some wedgies. you got to be in politics, learn how to take the punches, or get out of the game. But all exactly. he can do is yell about socialist Democrats, rhinos, and fake news. That's not intelligence. That is just fear-mongering and name-calling. You can do better, Huntsville. You can do better, the 5th District, but you don't. No. Anyway. It's a shame. It's, uh, it really is yeah. a shame. It's a shame that somebody like that is, is representing Huntsville, one of our most progressive cities, one of the cities mm -hmm. that people look to from, from outside of this state to move to. I mean, you look at, look, this, this, we're going to cover this, defense spending increased in North Alabama in 2019 by $400 million, Susan. Mm -hmm. It did. It did. It's at what? Nine point three million now? It's B billion. I'm sorry. Nine point two billion for the Huntsville mm -hmm. area alone, Josh. That's crazy. Not quite I mean, too big. Yeah, I money. mean, it's 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 a grow. It's it's one of the fastest growing places in the country. Uh, I mean, you know, it, it it should be the pride of this state. It should have representation that equals such yeah. a you know such a remarkable bright city and a bright future like we have here. Yeah. And, and let's not mistake the fact that it wasn't Mo Brooks that brought that money no. to Huntsville. It was Richard Shelby, Governor Ivy, and uh, Tommy, Tommy Battle. Battle. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Tommy Battle, while we've had some disagreements with him, he is one of the good guys. He's a good mayor. He's doing yeah. a good job. Uh, yeah. The you, listen, you can Madison. disagree with somebody and appreciate yeah. the way that they that they govern, and, yeah. and and that's you know that's the big thing right here is is that it is govern for the people there and do the best you can. And Tommy Battle has done that. Yeah, yeah, and and that's the thing. Uh, you know, uh, he wants to, Mo Brooks wants to run for Senate. He says if the pieces come together, this is not the type of representation we need in Washington D.C. to take the place of a statesman like Richard Shelby. Mm -hmm. We do not need a, another flame-throwing hypocrite, really, to represent That's Alabama. That's not concerned with what actually, the business that goes on in Alabama. Right, right. I want to know what can you do for the state of Alabama, not what yeah. you can do to get yourself on Fox News or QAnon TV or whatever it is they go on. Well, he doesn't know. Oh, all right, well, we're gonna have to leave it right there. You're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. We'll be right back with more news and opinion. You'll never guess what 400,000 people in the U.S. were using when they crashed their cars last year. No, not this. This. Distracted driving will kill you. Drive safe, Alabama. A message from your Alabama Department of Transportation.
the voice of Alabama politics. Susan, this past week, uh, the state of Alabama passed a grave marker, mm -hmm. not, probably not the right word to use, but 10, over 10,000 Alabamians have now perished due to COVID-19. Mm -hmm. This is just unbelievable in the modern era that we would have so many deaths in a year. In a year, in a year, 10,000 deaths just in Alabama. We've surpassed uh, over half a million nationwide. Yeah. Josh, uh, we ha don't have a great record here on this COVID-19 and Governor Ivey announced uh, on Thursday that she would uh, continue the mask order through April 9th and she did not expect to have to continue that mask order after April 9th. Uh, Republican governors across the state have been getting a lot of heat to open up the economy and the, well, to open up, to just get rid of masks is really what it's all about. Just get rid of masks. Yeah, um, I, I don't know what to do with people, really. Um, I, I mean, it's a mask. It, it's not, it, you know, when, when you talk about the downside of the mask, I mean, the, the only downside is I don't like wearing it. And, and, and I understand that argument. I do. I hate wearing a mask, especially when it's hot. I like to get outside and, and go places and uh, go to restaurants. And um, it's, you know, it, it is a, um, you know, it, it's a bit of a tiny burden on somebody. So I understand that part that argument. But uh, when you weigh that against actually saving millions of lives, which I, I think most doctors and scientists and experts that have studied this will tell you that these masks and, and remaining socially distant and washing our hands and doing all those other things has helped save a bunch of lives. When we put these mask right. mandates in place, you can look at it in, in states and look at the numbers of, of infections and, and hospitalizations after a mask order has gone into place and in places where mask orders were present versus uh, cities where they weren't. I mean, you, you have all sorts of data out there showing that these things work. And so to hear these arguments from people when we're a couple of months away from uh, possibly reaching herd immunity uh, through these vaccines uh, and getting people back to a normal life, to hear them say, you know, we want to jump on this two months early, it's just really idiocy when all we're talking about is doing a mask. I mean, you're not having to go and work or dig ditches or something, for God's sakes. Yeah. Put the mask on for another couple of months and you'll be fine. I've dug, I've dug ditches for a living. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, just look at the number of flu instances. <clears throat> they have they've dropped significantly. And just on that can tell you that social distancing, wearing a mask and washing your hands is working. If not just for COVID, it's working for the flu, too. Right. So yeah. it's got to be working for both. Right. And we yeah. expect, you know, right now it looks like around 100 million uh, Americans have been vaccinated. Mm -hmm. They think project by April, it should be 200 million, which if you take the children out of the equation, uh, you know, we, we about 350 million people, mm -hmm. we will be doing a great job of getting shots and arms. There is a caution that we need to be aware of the variants. So when we set hard dates, uh, I think you have to take that into consideration. But one thing that's for sure, uh, you know, there was a voice vote in the, the the Senate where they, or House, I forget which it was, where they, they voice voted that she should lift the mask ordinance. Uh, Chickens. Get on the record, man. Chickens. Yeah, we, we have not seen one profile in courage in no. a year. And, None. And, and for those of you who are not familiar with the voice, voice vote, is they say all in favor and they scream all at the same time. So nobody has to record what they voted. Right. They can yeah. barely hear whose voice it was. I mean, Kay Ivey's the only one who has consistently said, let's do this. While we think she could have done more, she has done what was needed as best as we can expect from Alabama. And having to fight her way through it the whole time. I know. This was the best one, though, Josh. This, this takes the cake of the week. Uh, Representative Jamie Kyle from uh, Russellville, mm -hmm. uh, they passed a bill out of the House in which it takes away the governor's power and emergency situations to say what businesses can close and not close to a degree. What it does mm -hmm. say is that if you close one business, you got to close them all. You know, so if there's a pandemic, if there's a bioterrorist attack or anything else, if you say, we well, got to close the bowling alleys, then you got to close the grocery stores and the hospitals and everything else. Brilliant, right? Uh, I, I wish there was a vaccine for these people. Um, I really do. Um, 
but I mean, well, I guess there is technically, and it's people, you know, actually learning who their who their representatives are and going out and, and voting for issues instead of uh, the party. But uh, you know, this sort of thing. Uh, listen, I, I understand kind of the you know the impetus behind the bill because I, I did think it was somewhat unfair that that big box stores were allowed to open when some of your mom and pop stores that were doing selling the same goods and and, and performing yeah. the same sort of services were not allowed to open and I, I did think that was unfair because in a lot of instances you would have been better off at one of those smaller stores with a much smaller shopping crowd around you uh there but you know, for to, to blanket it, this is why it's stupid. It's the it's the whole blanket issue in this where you can't close any type of business. I mean, if you want to open certain businesses or close certain businesses, make sure everybody has to be closed that is performing that service or, you know, back it off and say everybody has to be open. But but, but wait a minute. There's there's so uh, this is so well thought through that it's four pages. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, well, it's a. Uh, it's a, Four I mean, there pages. are some caveats, but they don't say what they are. Again, yeah. we ain't trying like, to read all that stuff. Get out of here. <laughs> again, like in our our community here, there's a Giant Johnson's Food. They have all the food and stuff that you would possibly need, but they had to close. It was not yeah. fair. No. And the the but, but yeah, Wal- Walmart, Walmart which is right down the road, stayed open. Yeah. Not fair. I agree with that portion of this bill, but we got it. We just can't blanket. No, you got to put more thought into it than this, guys. Come on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, come on. Come on. Keyword their thought. Sorry. We got about 40 seconds. I do want to mention that Alabama is set to receive about 40,000 doses of the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. And there's a lot of confusion about efficacy. The main thing we know about the Johnson Johnson vaccine, the trials have shown you don't die and you don't end up in the hospital if you get COVID-19. And it doesn't have to be refrigerated. Right. One shot and you're good. So people are nervous about taking it and because they don't think it's as effective or the efficacy is. The fact is if it keeps you from dying, it's pretty effective. Get the shot. All right. We're going to leave it right there. You're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. If you've been working, you've already proven yourself in ways you may not even notice. Managing your time, communicating effectively, and working as part of a team are key skills that employers value. At alabamaworks.com, you can find out how to build on your experience to up your game and get the job you really want because it's out there. Start your new success story at alabamaworks.com. Sponsored by Alabama Works, the Alabama Broadcasters Association, and this station. So you got caught speeding. But this time you got more than a ticket. What are you in for? Vehicular homicide. Stop speeding before speeding stops you. Drive safe, Alabama. A message from your Alabama Department of Transportation. A lot can change in five years. Except those smile lines you treated with Bellafill because that's about how long Bellafill will keep them smooth and filled. Five years. Now you can always look your best without all those injections, appointments, and costs. Bellafill is the only dermal filler that stimulates and maintains collagen growth long-term. Now time is on your side. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. Susan, as you know oh oh so well, the biggest deal in every legislative session, the only one that's mandated by law, is that they they get a budget done. They get a they get a general fund budget and then they get a uh, education trust fund budget together. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're working hard on that. Recently, a lot of questions have been flying around the state house about the fact that the attorney general's budget is around $16 million. Mm -hmm. No one's complained about that. Governor Ivey's on board with that. But the question has come because there are these off 
out of state payments that are coming to uh, the attorney general's office in the form of these uh, civil lawsuit settlements. But, mm -hmm. And so it's kind of a way for the attorney general's office to get more money in that the legislature doesn't know about. It's not written into the budget. No, and basically how it works is a, if you've got a civil suit that's settled out of state, then that money remains in that state, but is it has access for the attorney general of Alabama to get that money. Right. So he can have money, you know, stashed in multiple states, and the legislature not know anything about it. So, Josh, I don't think you understand this like I do. If there's a multi-state suit mm -hmm. and it ends up, uh, you know, say Missouri was the leader in this thing, the money yeah. ends up there, right? Is that, I mean, that's kind of the understanding. You, you've been hearing yeah. from folks that are raising questions, I know. Yeah, and you've yeah, raised there, some there, questions there, yourself. There have been some lawmakers asking some questions about that, and, and it had, I had talked to some of them, and they brought it up to me, wanted to know if we, you know, if we knew anything about this uh, sort of a thing, and um, you know, and so we, I've asked some questions. I've sent some questions over to Steve Marshall's office. Apparently, it's been going on for a few years now. Uh, it has. Where they do this, and and and, and you're right. It's it's these suits where they they'll sue a drug manufacturer, for example, in the opioid situation, and, right. and the lead plaintiff on that will be a state different from Alabama, uh, right. and so the the money that's paid out under these settlements goes to that lead plaintiff state. And Alabama has just apparently been allowing it to remain in those lead plaintiff states. And the AG's office had then been taking that money out at, at sporadic times and, and in sporadic amounts for whatever they needed it for. Now, again, I want to say nobody is, ne is necessarily claiming that money has been misspent or no, that no, anything no, nefarious has gone on with this. Uh, but right. it is no. a way to... Uh, uh, subsidize the budget, so to speak, and, and keep it outside uh, the, the legislature, which is supposed to be the, the body that controls the money that comes in through the state. Meanwhile, well, other agencies and other needs within that general fund budget are being cut or whatever to subsidize mm -hmm. the AG's office, even though they have access to this money. No, and again, yes. nobody's saying that anything illegal no. is being done. What no. we're saying is it might just be a little sneaky. Uh, <laughs> but there you go. Uh, yeah. We've asked uh, the Attorney General's office to explain what's going on. They have yet to do so. Uh, we have asked the General Fund and the uh, General Fund budget chairs about it, and we have not heard back from them that I know of. Uh, one thing that's come up that I think is, is extremely important uh, is that we've had this debate over absentee ballots, and it looked for a while that we were gonna have no excuse absentee ballots in Alabama, it now looks dead. Now, to get an absentee ballot in Alabama, all you have to do is sign a, an affidavit saying that you are either ill, too sick to come, or ha have a health problem, or mm -hmm. that you are gonna be out of town. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And we had no excuse for this last election, and Alabama was held up as a model, Josh. Yeah, you know, for the last uh, couple months now, uh, John Merrill has been running around here talking about how secure and safe and, and wonderful all the elections were in this state. And, you know, is uh, the in charge of a national organization on, on voting and elections and, uh, and how, how great everything was. And everybody in the world praised him for it. And we had essentially had no excuse absentee voting in this. I mean, yeah. you had to lie. Uh, which the state apparently encouraged, but we, we had that. We, you know, we had record number of absentee votes coming in, in this state. And through all of the audits and all of the things that have gone on, we found zero fraud. Uh, right. We found no abnormalities at all. Uh, and, and you look at it, there's no reason we wouldn't have this. There's none. Uh, all it does is, to pro is provide another secure, safe option for people to vote and increases votes. But so, for some reason, and then, maybe you have an answer. For some reason, we're not going to do it. Could you could you tell me why? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is there if any reason, don't. black or white, out there that you could tell me? I mean, I black can't especially. think of any reason. Um, <laughs> I can't think of any reason whatsoever. Particularly the, the black thing, reason. Now, is there any reason yeah, you could tell yeah. me why we're not going to do this? Yeah. Well, the thing is, a a a republic such as ours, a, demo, a, a, a democratic republic such as ours cannot survive if you're going to suppress voters all the time and you're going to tell people that their vote was uh, was a lie, that the election mm -hmm. was stolen. We should open up voting and make it the basically the easiest thing exactly. that people do. Exactly. 
yep. regardless if you're a Democrat or Republican, the intention mm-hmm. here is that everybody should be able to have access to a ballot in whatever form yep. to voice yep. their opinion. Doesn't matter what party you're with. No, no. It's, automatic it's voter registration uh, should should be should be legal. There's no reason why we, we can't do that uh, when you go uh, for any reason. Uh, uh, there there should be a number of options for submitting a ballot safely and securely, uh, like we have done. And and the great thing about all of these allegations of fraud all over the country is we have done a tremendous number of audits, and so we know that it's all safe because we have found not one major instance of fraud out of all of these audits all over the country. Yeah, not one, but suppressing the vote tends to favor one party over another, and I suppose that's... I just find that so dishonest. It is, but dishonesty in politics, that's like almost mother's milk. It's at least cat's milk. But we have one good news. Uh, Yoga being allowed in public schools has taken a step forward. Susan? (laughs) Oh, wow. That's all yeah. I, say. <laughs> I love you. I mean, I mean, this is come on, people. You're talking about kids that need a time out or whatever, mm-hmm. getting them to sit and, and be quiet or, or, you know, put their uh, energies toward, you know, healing and being meditated. Well, now you're talking. Whoa, this is communist whoa, talk. Whoa, here. whoa, whoa. You <laughs> shut your coming. filthy mouth over there, okay? <laughs> We're and, not doing and, any of this Hindu indoctrination stuff in our schools. No, ma'am. No. No, 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 no stretching. But, but if they want to stretch and pick up a Bible, okay, but nothing else. <laughs> well, I think stretching and picking up a Bible and actually reading it would be a great thing. But we're going to have to leave it right there. You've been watching the V, the voice of Alabama politics. You watch us because we watch them.